West Penwith is a unique and ancient landscape lying right at the very tip of the UK. This iconic area of Cornwall is home to moorlands, meadows, rugged coastlines, ancient sites and communities of wildlife and people. The Penwith Landscape Partnership has uncovered many ancient sites, restored depleted habitats, engaged and connected with landowners, farmers, local communities and conservation organisations, enabling them to come together to reconnect the landscape for both people and wildlife. In this short series of podcasts, we explore the project's achievements and highlight how you can help us to preserve and protect the landscape for years to come. In this episode, Katie, the PLP Digital and Communications Officer, and Sue, the PLP Resident Artist, talk about the visual art element of the project. Hello everyone, welcome to a podcast from the Penrith Landscape Partnership. I'm Katie and I'm the Digital and Communications Officer for the Penrith Landscape Partnership. That means my area includes looking after communications, website, and any other projects related to that sort of outreach. Now, one of the projects that I have been looking after is the Seeing the Landscape project. Now, the Penrith Landscape Partnership has 13 different projects of work that cover the whole range of activities from working with volunteers through farming, through access and ancient sites. In the case of Seeing the Landscape, the focus of this project was to encourage people to celebrate the Penrith Landscape through art and creativity in all its various forms. We were trying to build on the very strong legacy of art in Penwith, because of course we have here Newlyn, St Ives and many other famous art schools. Now I am delighted to welcome Sue Kinley, who is joining me for this podcast. Hello Sue. Hi, hi Katie. All right, so Sue, did you want to share a little bit of information about yourself and how you got involved in seeing the landscape? Yes, when I saw the original information um, about the Seeing the Landscape project, I was really interested and excited by it because as a professional artist, my own work's rooted in the West Penwood landscape, particularly in archaeological sites, Bronze Age sites. But Penwith as a whole, I've just always loved going there and it influences my work. I've also worked in education. Um, I've worked with lots of community groups, different age groups. So when I saw the post of the family workshop art facilitator advertised, I thought, yes, you know, this this is for me. So I, I was really, really pleased, you know, to be able to get that and take it on. So with the family art workshops, they were a part of the work that we were doing for Seeing the Landscape. Do you want to share a bit about the kind of thing we did during the workshops and the people who came along? Yes, it's been running. My involvement's been around about two years now. We were delayed at the start because of COVID restrictions. So originally, the sort of activities we started with, we did some online digital art exercises and just really enjoyable things for families to get involved with and also a couple of art walks out in the landscape, drawing, sketching, just looking and collecting. And then finally, last year, actually managed to get to do some real physical workshops. And they ranged from art workshops looking at Cornish hedges and working with mixed media and building up little models of Cornish hedges Um, working from lichens, making hangings, mobiles, collages. We did painted butterflies, tried to actually find the elusive um, West Penwith fritillary butterfly, but that was working um, with all sorts of age groups. So I had one workshop where I had a family with three young children. The youngest was six months old. And at the same workshop, I had some adults that were retired. And in fact, they had taught art, but they just really wanted to get involved and work with some different materials and just have a a really enjoyable time. And also at the end of that workshop, that particular mother said to me that she felt it was the first time um, since she'd had children that she felt like being herself again and actually getting back into artwork. So I thought that that was a really nice comment. Another really good workshop um, that we did was uh, lino cutting and printing, and that was in St Berrien Village Hall. That one was really well attended. Again, lots of different family groups on all sorts of levels of ability. And the nice thing about these workshops is 
although I can set up the activity that we're doing, you can't predict always what's going to come out. So you get an incredibly diverse range of artworks, colours, materials, textures, and, and that's really exciting. Fantastic. Yes, I, mean, I came along for part of the printing workshop and I remember it being a lot of fun and everyone being really super into it, which is fantastic. So that's absolutely what we wanted from um, the Scene for Landscape and the Family Art Workshops. So um, with all the Family Art Workshops that you did, would, do you have a favourite memory that has come out of them? Um, I think I enjoyed them all in different ways, actually. Um, I did enjoy the St Burian Rally which we did this year, end of July. And again, I think that had been postponed for a couple of years. That was just a nice experience because just being part of a kind of really local Penwith event um, over two days and lots and lots of families and children came into the Penwith Landscape Partnership tent. I set up an activity working largely on the floor when children could cut shapes of stone hedges and also paint them and make textures. And, and that was really good fun. And it sort of set up some really nice conversations as well. I think I've just enjoyed them all in different ways, really. Yeah. And the lino cutting was really good, really good fun. Really nice results. Yeah. Yeah, we had a lot of um, lovely feedback from all the workshops. It's just fantastic. And one of the things we was hopeful seeing the landscape is that it would encourage a really diverse range of individuals to get yeah. involved because art is something that everyone can get involved with in their own mm. way. So with all the different family workshops, each of them had a different theme or something mm. similar. Mm. How did you choose the themes that you were going to do for each one? Ah, uh, well, that's interesting. Um, I think when I started, I started with things that were quite close to my heart. So... Um, I've always loved Cornish hedges, so that was quite an obvious starting point with me. Also, I love looking into the surfaces of stones and rocks, ancient rocks. So the lichens was a, a fairly um, good starting point. Being out in the landscape, I think also encouraging people to not just look at distant views, but look really, really close up, you know, so looking at what's under their feet, or what could be growing um, in a hedge or next to a gate, looking at the way things change through the seasons. Um, so it's it just really an extension of the way that I would lose myself in the landscape when I go for a walk. And that, that's how I started, really. Now, as well as the family workshops, you also attended artist workshops that were run by Maze Creative for another part of seeing the landscape. Do you want to talk a little bit about what happened with those? Yes, I did. I went along, we did, I'm just trying to remember now, we walked to Khan Uni and the um, Fugu there and that was with Joe um, and Caroline with Maze Creatives and we were looking at things like soundscapes and most of the people on that walk were interested in the archaeology ancient sites of Penwith. So Khan Uni is an Iron Age village, still very interesting place. You can actually see the remains of hut circles and round walls. It's um, very, very atmospheric. From that, I think as a group, we decided that we'd actually go on to make some artworks, which were then exhibited at a later date in San Creed Village Hall. So we did actually have a sort of mini exhibition there, which which was nice. And members of the, the public came in to look at what we'd been doing. Yeah, and the um, the exhibition at Sand Creed was well, it was fantastic, and it was a very um, diverse range of artwork yeah. there. Yeah, yes, it was. I think you know that is just one of the things that sort of typified the whole project. It's like you set something up, you let it run, and you don't quite know what you're going to get. <laughs> But that makes it a really sort of rich and rewarding experience. And then you end up with, you know, artworks or, or an exhibition or whatever, where things come together that might not normally come together had you known what you're going to have from the start, if that makes sense. Yes, I think when I saw it, I found very interesting for different take some more different artists on the same source material, effectively, because yeah. it was all based around um, Carnooney and... Yeah. The walk to it from Chapel Cambray, I That's think, right, remember? yeah. Yes, we walked across from the car park at the bottom of Chapel Cambray. And that's sort of very much part of the experience, really, because the walk across the, the moorland Carnuni takes you down by a very old well. 
um, and a sort of grove of trees um, before you come into Khan Uni itself. So yeah, no, it was, it's a really nice thing to do. Yes, it's a it's a lovely walk down there. And there's a lot of folklore associated with yeah. Khan Uni well as well, which I think did inspire some of the artists a bit in the. Yes. Yes, we had some poetry. Artworks. Yeah, it was it was a real mix poetry and yeah. photography, yeah. different sorts of art, yeah. and um, you created your glass based art for it. The work that I did for that particular exhibition was little glass and enamel copper panels. So they came from um, a piece I made a long time ago. In fact, when I first moved to Cornwall around about 1990, Carnuni was one of the first places I discovered on my travels. And um, I made a piece based on the the fogu down there. And it was very large. It was sort of several metres high and it was a big silk hanging. So I decided that all these years later, I'd like to come back and revisit Um, the same idea but on a small scale and a different material so it's very much about the way light travels into the chamber of the fogu through a grid cut into the ceiling and the way that changes through the day oh fantastic for anyone who may not know what a fogu is because it is a one of those cornish terms that people may not recognize it's a kind of an underground passage that you normally find associated with iron age sites people actually don't really know what they're for to this day no. there's been lots of different debate about whether it was ritual storage or a safe house or anything else really but still they're a bit of a mystery yeah yes they are and i think the fascinating thing about that whole landscape in that area is that so many sites connect up and some of these sites go back to the early Bronze Age um, or even older. So we're talking 2000 years plus BC. But you have all these overlays of history um, when you're walking in West Penwith, which is just fascinating. Absolutely. And it's something that we explore quite a lot in our various trails that we offer online. And one of the first family art workshops we did was based on one of our walking trails. Oh, yes, it was. Yes. So we started off in St Just. And we walked up to Tregaseal Stone Circle. It's not a very long walk, but it's a really interesting walk. Because, again, you go through layers of history. You walked through the Tregaseal Valley, which actually in the 19th century was quite industrial and is now a very sort of tranquil little hamlet. And walk, walking up onto the moor near Kennyjack Common, um, you come to Tregaseal Stone Circle. Again, Bronze Age, possibly 2,000 years or more BC, but just wonderful arrangement of stones and you can look up to see the, um, the ridge of Kenny Jack outcrop of rocks on the horizon and again we had a really mixed age group we had to sort of stage it because we had children that were excited and running ahead and then we had older people that were a bit slower so we kind of walked in in groups to pace it and we made folding concertina sketchbooks drawing along the way drawing at the stone circle and um, I think we did some squashed blackberry sort of finger drawing at one point. <laughs> so that that was just lovely getting outside. And I think I did that walk twice. The first time the weather was beautiful and the second time it was torrential rain. So uh, you sort of deal with what comes. Yeah, I think that's probably one of the biggest challenges of the Penwith landscape is the ever-changeable Penwith weather because it can be beautifully sunny one minute and then absolutely chucking it down the next. I think it's just the way we've had to roll with it for pretty much any other outside activities we've done, your walks including. Yeah. I actually do remember the day that you went out for the second walk and being sat in the office with the, absolutely bucking it down outside and thinking, <laughs> mm, oh, I'm glad they're really keen because they're going to need to be out there. And we were actually amazed how long you guys stayed out. Everyone still wanted to be out there in the landscape creating art. Yeah, oh, yes, I know. Yeah, everyone was um, very tenacious. No, they weren't giving up. (laughs) I think it just shows how much the draw of art, though, and getting involved in this kind of creativity really can have for people, that they can not hello high water or even a pen with downpour will stop people if they want to be creative. Yes. And I also think for a lot of people, you know, they feel that they like to do something related to art, but if you have some sort of structured activity, it just almost gives them the permission to do it. And if you create an atmosphere that's enjoyable as well, um, there's no pressure to perform or for anyone to actually produce something of any particular standard. You know, it's just something that is there for everybody. No, I think that's really important. And it's one of the things we were so keen on the scene for landscape was that 
art is for everybody it's not just professional artists it's for anyone who just wants to get involved mm. and um, another part of the aim of the project was to reach out to groups who may have sort of physical limitations that mean they may not be able to engage with the landscape as actively as others mm. and art is a good way to still be able to connect with the landscape now we were able to display some of the pieces that came out of them as part of our exhibition just the past summer in st just um how was it like setting up that bit of the exhibition well, um i really enjoyed that day actually i think I think one interesting thing is that as an artist, I quite often set up exhibitions and I set up things with my own work and then you feel very kind of, you get stressed and quite pressurised about it. But the lovely thing about doing that was it wasn't my work, it was everybody else's work. And I, you know, just really enjoyed seeing it all again, um, seeing some people that I hadn't seen since the workshops um, and putting things together. Um and it was really nice to actually to see the family art workshop pieces in the context of all the other things that had been happening as well. And I think that was the first opportunity for that. Mm. So all the other art strands that had happened through seeing the landscape came together in one place. So the children's photography linked, you know, really nicely across to the workshops, across to the professional art pieces that were there. I enjoy kind of getting involved with that sort of thing and I quite enjoy organising the way things are going to look together. So, I, yeah, that was great. And um, for those who couldn't attend it, um, as you said, it did pull together items from across the range of stuff we've seen for landscapes, so as well as the family art workshops, it was some of the items that were exhibited at Sandcreed. We had professional artworks describing the year of the Cornish Hedge, visually, by some professional artists, and also the competition entries we had as well. Yeah, it was a real collection of stuff mm. that came together, but um, the exhibition was very well received. We had over 800 visitors wow. over the... Mm nearly two weeks it was on in mm. the end so um, we were really pleased with that and mm. how well it was received i think it it shows that there is a there's definitely still an appetite in penwith for art after all these years and with such a rich legacy of art down here oh definitely absolutely and also i think just working in this way you know it's a very sort of holistic way of working because it's linked communities the landscape every aspect of this part of west cornwall so maybe people have been used to looking at art in cornwall and west cornwall in a particular way in a particular historic way looking at you know professional artists from the past that are very well known and this sort of brings i think another whole viewpoint in and also, uh, you know, hopefully a way in if people have got involved in workshops that they might then go and look at an exhibition and, and look at artwork differently and sort of see, well, actually, yeah, I can see maybe how that idea happened or where it came from or how those materials might have worked. Absolutely. It kind of it helps people create an understanding about art. And I think also we try to kind of dem demystify it a bit. So as I think some people think that, oh, no, art, can't get involved in that it's a bit too scary for me whereas we were very much wanting to celebrate the fact that it is for everyone and that's why we were so keen to have the family art workshops tools put on and the equal level with everything else in that exhibition and the children's photography the competition entries absolutely everything to say that you don't have to be a professional artist yeah to do art yeah definitely and um, i think part of that is taking it away from a gallery or an art school or a studio or whatever else you might regard as a professional art place but if you if you take that context away and you're suddenly out in the landscape or you're in a village hall or wherever you know that just brings a completely different approach so if you were talking to someone who wanted to engage creatively with the local landscape and didn't know where to start what advice would you give them i guess that would depend on where we were and what the landscape was but if we're if we're talking about Penwith yeah I mean my advice would be just to sort of get out and look not actually try and, and worry about making something or drawing something or painting something but just go out and experience it first maybe take a sketchbook just don't worry about doing perfect drawings but just jot anything down you know thoughts notes scribbles take photographs almost like a little diary but just getting out there and immersing yourself in the landscape, I think, is really important. And I know 
from my own point of view as well, if I, I go out and I just take photographs and then you can forget about them and you look at them sometime later and you think, oh, I can't quite remember why I took that. But actually, if you put that together with lots of other things like, as I say, little jottings or ideas or marks, or if you see a colour you like, you know, maybe take some colour pencils. If you put all those things together, then you've got a start of somewhere to go and something you might like to follow up or make or do. For me, work it always comes from place. They're always, always linked together. So for me, it's a very natural process, but I, I can see that for some people, they might think, oh, well, how would you do that? But yeah, just getting out there and immersing yourself in the landscape is the first thing to do. And I think it was against what you mentioned earlier about taking art out of that kind of strict gallery or studio context. And I think it's a similar thing here. It just mm. is not been in the mindset of I need to be in an official artist setting in order to do art. Yeah, no, that that's definitely true. And people work in many different ways, you know, um, that aren't at all in those settings. And some people gather lots of information and take them back to wherever they want to work. You know, that might be a tabletop, a garden shed or, you know, room in their house. Absolutely. Would you say that the work you've done on Scene the Landscape has inspired your work as you go forward? I think it has because it's the whole thing is circular, really. Every time I go out and do something, I come across something that feeds back into my ideas and my work. And then quite often, you know, people are working on things and I think oh, you know, they're approaching that in such a different way. It's interesting for me to see that, and that might encourage me, you know, just to see things from a different angle. So definitely, yeah. And also for me, the idea of changes through the seasons and time passing, so every time you go out, things change. Yes, Penwith does change a lot through the seasons, so it is lovely to get out there and see it in the various different types of year. There's always something going on in the landscape, even in the depths of winter when you might not think so. Yes, and of course, some of the art activities that you devise for us, they are available online. Yes, they are. Yeah, they're still there. If people right. would, would like to go and look up on the website. Absolutely. And that's um, if you go onto the penwithlandscape.com website, it's art and activities in the menu. You'll find links there to all of the activities that Sue did, as well as a lot of other stuff from Seeing the Landscape as well. We've got galleries of the competition entries and all sorts on there. So by all means, go there and have a look and see what's happened. And um, to everyone who's been involved in Seeing the Landscape, particularly, of course, our workshop leaders like Sue and Mez Creative, we thank you so much. And to everyone who's participated as well, thank you so much for being so keen and willing to get involved. We truly appreciate it. And Seeing the Landscape would not have been the project without you. Oh, well, thank, thank you, Katie. And I, I'd just like to say that one of the things I've enjoyed about the project is just meeting the whole team as well. It's been a really great team to work with, and I've really enjoyed that. Thanks to Katie and Sue. Next week, we have Katie, the PLP Digital Communications Officer, and Tony, our resident Cornish language expert, talking about the Cornish language in the landscape. The Penrith Landscape Partnership is a five-year project supported by National Lottery players through the National Lottery Heritage Fund. To find out more about our work and our partners, please head to penwithlandscape.com. For links and references from each episode, please refer to the show notes. If you've enjoyed the podcast, please rate and review on your podcast platform. Thanks for listening. <laughs>